The Führer said that the British government would advance 1,200 million pounds sterling for German arms purchases from the USA. This would be backed by existing British gold reserves in America. He wished to make it clear that this was in no sense a reparation, but was to provide for the forthcoming campaign against the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Mr. Churchill said, XPD by Len Dayton, dramatized in eight parts by Michael Bakewell. Episode six, A Safe House for Moscow. The Prime Minister will see you now, Sir Sidney. Thank you. Good morning, Sir Sidney. Good morning, Prime Minister. I'll come straight to the point. Now sit down. Sir? There has been a leak. A leak, Prime Minister? From your department, Sir Sidney. I don't quite understand, sir. I refer to the murder of the Hamburg Bank employee Paul Bock and his companion. Oh, but... There is no way in which the members of what your report describes as Operation Siegfried could have learnt of Bock's computer piracy other than through your department. Not quite Someone a... must have passed on information about Bock's activities to Operation Siegfried. I expect you to make an immediate investigation. Miss Bedford. Get on to Herr Hyman of the Bundesnachrichtendienst. See if he can have lunch with me tomorrow, will you? I'll do it right away, sir. And send in Mr. Stewart. Good morning, Sir Sidney. Sit down, Stewart, sit down. Right. Anything new from young Stein? I've been following your advice, Sir Sidney, about the tiger shoot. What? Tiger shoot? Don't let the tiger gallop past. Mm, oh, yes, of course. And? I don't think the boy knows very much, sir. His father obviously doesn't confide in him a great deal. What, nothing at all? Only by inference, sir. Hmm. I think we can rule out the house in Geneva where Colonel Pittman lives. Stein says his father told him he'd moved the documents out of there some time ago. And I think that's probably true. Well, it's vital we lay our hands on those documents. The Prime Minister was saying only so this morning, Stuart. The reputation of Sir Winston Churchill must in no way be compromised. You do see what I mean? I'm an admirer of Sir Winston myself, sir. Yes, he was a great man. That's the essence of the matter. We must do a good job on this one because it's something we all believe in. Luckily, I can assure you the Hitler minutes are forgeries. Forgeries? But then why on but earth... that are... doesn't mean we mustn't do everything within our power to get our hands on them. Anything else to report? Yes, sir. We have a positive identification on the photograph. What photograph? The wartime photograph that I found in Franz Wafer's safe after the farm had been destroyed. Ah. One of the men in the photo was Wafer himself. The second man was Max Breslau. And now we've identified the third person. Oh, and who's he? Wilhelm Hans Kleiber. He made quite a name for himself during the war. He was an Abwehr officer, and then the SS took him into the RSHA when they took over all the intelligence services. He was taken to the Galen organization when it got going again after the war. Hmm, a dedicated fellow. A cynic. Perhaps a mercenary. Consistently anti-communist then, and still alive. Very much alive. He's the senior officer in a leading German security company. Is he indeed? Which is reputed to have links with the Bundesnach Richtendienst. I see. What else? That's all we have officially, sir. And unofficially, Stuart? Well, am I to be taken into your confidence? He might be a Moscow Center operative. And who has provided us with this alarming scenario? The collator, sir. I see. Not such an anti-communist as I thought then, eh, Stuart? If there is some sort of war crimes guilt hanging over Cliver's head, the Russians might have used it to blackmail him into working for them. Oh, yes, you read my mind, Stuart. We've seen that one before, haven't we? Shouldn't we tell Washington about Cliver, sir? They could help us a lot on the German end. And how would you go about it? A request for information exchange. Give them details of the King's Cross murders, the explosion at Wafer's farmhouse, and the photo of Cliver. Ask them if they can link any of it with Max Breslau, and so on. Very well, Stuart. Assemble a telex and let me have a look at it after lunch. I don't like the thought of Moscow Centre being involved. Think of what the Kremlin could do with the Hitler minutes. Exactly, sir. But we've got to be very sparing on what we tell Washington. I don't want the CIA let loose all over the shop. 
If any of you people want Cokes or soft drinks, get them now, huh? Uh, we don't want a lot of getting up and walking about the way it was last week, okay? Now, you've got the agenda on the table in front of you. The Brits finally came through with something that could take us right inside the Soviet embassy. Okay, Sam? Now, why don't you give us the linkage the way it is so far? Right. Let's start with Yuri Gretschko. You gotta remember that in the early part of the year, we did not. We did not have any evidence that Gretschko was anything but an assistant military attaché assigned to the Washington Embassy. Uh, we figured him for KGB the second he got off the train. Yeah. Our big break came in April, when Gretschko launched a man we'd never seen before, Edward Parker. Uh, yeah. We triple digited him into the police computer. Then in June, Gretschko got a walk-on part at the Soviet Embassy in Mexico City. <laughs> Starring that day was none other than General Schmuck, the fabulous, and we were beginning to think mythical General Stanislav Schmuck, <laughs> the first directorate's yeah. operational division deputy. And if that isn't already a protein-enriched diet, who comes to the embassy but our mysterious pal, Edward Parker of Chicago? Uh, don't forget the Los Angeles killing. Mm. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, we've had a guy butchered in Los Angeles. And the L.A. cops are asking Chicago about Parker's car and what it was doing parked near the victim's office at the time of the murder. Uh, oh, hold it, Sam. You mean this guy who was killed was one of our people? Yeah, yeah, there's no agency connection whatsoever. His name was Lustig, Bernard Lustig. No connection with CIA or FBI or any other government agency. So why was he killed? Uh, we don't have a line on that at the moment, uh, but let's keep to what happened, Sam. Uh, can we have the projector, please? Uh, let's see the pics. Yeah. The British had a double slaying in London with all the same modus operandi as the Lustig killing. Now, they've asked us to scan the computer for this man, Wilhelm Kleiber. Well, gentlemen, Kleiber has been on the computer for over three years, and he was one of ours. He strolled into the Office of Strategic Studies after the war and offered to show us where the Nazis had hidden foreign currency and such like in exchange for a job with us. He did okay. And the poor old U.S. taxpayer picked up the tab for his various cover operations, including a wholesale wine business and a security company. <laughs> That's what I call style. <laughs> but it still wasn't good enough for Kleiber. He got into financial difficulties two or three times, but he always seemed to survive. Moscow got to him. Is that what you're implying? That's what I'm trying to avoid saying. Sam here is a very cautious individual. You know that. Mm. Huh? Sure, Kleiber was turned for money. It's as clear as daylight. He's a Moscow center operative. And there's a good indication that Kleiber was the hitman who helped Parker knock mm. off Lustig in Los Angeles. It's likely that the British are right in thinking that Kleiber did the double killing in London last week. Yeah, what we have so far is enough to link Gretschko through the mysterious Mr. Parker with Kleiber and those killings. We've pink-starred Kleiber with customs and immigration. If he continues traveling on the same passport, we could nail him. He seems to travel everywhere alone. We think Parker might be the illegal the resident illegal. Uh, Can you believe it? But, but, we want something better out of this than swapping Parker for some American kid who got caught buying black market bubble gum in Red Square. <laughs> I want Gretschko caught with his pants down. Right. I want solid evidence to show that these decapitation killings were planned here in the goddamn Russian embassy. Hmm. I want to see it spread good and big across the headlines. The Brits have given us Kleiber, but the important targets are Gretschko and Parker. Now, don't forget it. Uh, what do the Brits want out of it? They're interested in a guy on the coast called Stein and a German-born U.S. citizen named Max Breslow. Mm. We've had to give them a hands-off undertaking for both. They've given us a hands-off undertaking on Kleiber. Sounds like a fair deal. Sure. Yeah. Let's see if anyone sticks to it. <laughs> I'd like to see that. <laughs> So you got my message, Max. It's good to see you. <laughs> what a place for a meeting. <laughs> Not quite your style, eh, Max? <laughs> oh, I love it. It reminds me of the war. What do you want? Elijah B. Uh, get some coffee. Well, that's all right. I don't need any. How is the film? Well, they're working on the sets now. Oh, you should see the Reich Chancellery. Yes, I watched the Red Army destroy it in 1945. A lot of things have happened. I thought it was best to come myself. Well? Some youngster in London gained access to the new Frulin computer that Botka's bank have installed in Hanover. What did he discover? 
he found his way to Operation Siegfried. Good God, Vili. What did you do? What do you think? There was no alternative, Max. He had all the names and addresses. You said the killing of the Britisher from Washington would be the end of it. You tried to kill Stuart and wiped out the wrong man. It was a bad business, Vili. And killing Stuart would have solved nothing. Oh, it's easy to be clever afterwards. Don't tell me you're losing your nerve, Max. I depend on you. And then our old comrade, Franz Weffer. Why did he have to be killed? Our old comrade only wanted to discover what we were doing. Had he found out, he would have reported everything to British intelligence. He was their man. People are going to get hurt, Max. Stein will have to be disposed of. You realize that, don't oh, you? God. He knows too much to remain alive. It is regrettable. I don't enjoy it. But it is a fact. Where is Stein now? Are my people in Los Angeles not keeping you informed? And the last I heard, he sent his son Billy to London. And it was thanks to you that we knew who he was going to see. It was clever of you to take that message off Stein's answering machine. There was nothing clever about it. I have the same model of answering machine. Stein got it for me wholesale. I was able to get a whistle with the same musical tone as Stein's machine. It was of immense help to us. And you know who it was sent the message? No. The boy who cracked the computer and found his way into Operation Siegfried. And you know how I found that out? From the head of the British Secret Service himself, Sir Sidney Ryden. He had lunch with an old friend of mine from the BND and asked him for help. But what happened to Billy Stein? I don't know exactly. The English Secret Service sent their men along to see him, and now we've lost touch with him. Well, he hasn't returned to Los Angeles. How can you be certain? Because he would be with my daughter, Mary. Your daughter and the Stein boy? Well, better him than the Mexican gas station attendant who chased her last year. <clears throat> Do you think the British intelligence is holding Billy? I think we can safely assume that they have Billy Stein in custody and that they have interrogated him very successfully. <clears throat> what is our greatest problem, Max? Hmm? Surely it is finding the exact whereabouts of the Hitler minutes. Well, now we know where they are. The British have discovered that the Hitler minutes and all the rest of the documents are in the house of Colonel Pittman in Switzerland. We even know what sort of strong room protects them. Yes, they can only have got this information from young Stein. But how did you find out? We had an amazing stroke of luck, Max. I told you of the friendship between the BND and uh, Sir Sidney Ryden. Yeah. They lunch together and talk of cacti. <laughs> well, yesterday they met again. And Ryden asked my friend to help him translate a catalogue from Schiff, the Swiss locksmith. He was particularly concerned about a make he said belonged to someone in Geneva. We know the model and the year. And you're thinking of breaking into the safe? No, of course not. No burglar would have the time or the sort of equipment to open the door of a strong room such as this. Safe crackers are extinct, Max. Oh, they've been replaced by men who carry shotguns and automatic weapons and take a bank by assault. How do you think I could have got my security company off the ground and up to its present turnover without the alarm caused by these dedicated gunmen? The impregnable safe gave the armed raiders their chance, and it gave me my chance too, Max. You're not thinking of attacking the house. I beg you to reconsider, Vili. A burglar is one thing. An armed raid is going too far. All we have to do is to get into the house and talk to Pittman. We have to convince him that it's in his interest to open the safe. Yes, yes, and you're very good at that, Willie. Don't look so alarmed, Max. It will be wonderful, just like old times. You're mad, Billy. You'll get yourself killed. <sighs> I'm not afraid to die. We lost some good comrades in the war. It would not be so terrible to join them again. You'll have to come to Switzerland as well, Max. No, 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 there's too much to do here. I, I need to be at the studios. This is much more important than your film. You don't need me for the operation. I want you with me, Max. They haven't stopped hunting down the Nazis. They got Barbie. Sooner or later, someone will turn Mengele in. Oh, well. oh, I grant you're not in that class, Max. But you did enough while you were in the SS to be of interest to the authorities. They don't give up, Max. You should have changed your name. Surely someone else could go to Geneva. I want you, Max. Be ready to leave early next week. That's an order from the Trust. Very well, Billy. I'll be ready to go. The Trust has money, Max, and lawyers. The denaturalization and deportation proceedings take place in a civil court. 
Good lawyers and good advice and a good word in the right place can work wonders in I this said country. I'll go, Willie. You don't have to say any more. Jeez, it's hot up here. It's burning through my shoes. Where now? Across the roof and onto the block next door. Uh -uh. Jumps only a few feet and then make for the stairway opening. Keep behind the row of washing. Okay? Okay. Move. These old buildings sure do smell bad in the heat. Which is the apartment? Number eight. We looked it over yesterday. The lock should take you all of 30 seconds. What a lousy little lock. You sure this is the right place? Sure thing. Expensive locks in a district like this could draw just the kind of attention these people are trying to avoid. This is a, this is a safe house from Moscow Center. Nothing secret, nothing valuable here, just a place to hide. Yeah. Beds look like they ain't been slept in in months. Where do we fix the transmitters? Inside the electricity socket. You take the icebox, I'll take the bed. Here and here stinks. Looks like the windows ain't been open all year. Hey, watch that screwdriver. We don't want screw marks in the plastic covers. Why are we using such old-fashioned equipment? Be not curious in unnecessary matters, it says in the good book. For more things are shown unto thee than men understand. Don't kid around. Hey, how come you always talk like the Bible? It's in the blood. My dad used to be a lay preacher. Well, why ain't we fitting uh, voice-activated bugs or something more sophisticated? Because the guys who use this place are pros. Like I tell you, don't mark the plastic. These are the kind of people who will check the place. You didn't answer the question. <sighs> because if we put voice-activated sets into the room, anyone could locate them by using a vest pocket detector. Mm. Blast off any powerful sound and the voice activator will sing for you. So, someone's got to sit outside and monitor this baby. Not someone. Us. They fixed up an old panel truck for us around the block. Could be in for a long evening. Yeah, what makes you so sure they'll come? Uh, they'll come all right. Now, uh, do the other room. And don't get jumpy. We got all the time in the world. You got it tuned in? Yep. Yeah. Hit him. Oh, open the window. The area is right. terrible. Oh, it hasn't been used in ages. It's stuck. Oh, leave it there. You got it. You're certain that we run no risk involving Breslow? All he thinks about is his stupid little film. You don't sound very certain. Of course I'm certain. There's no chance that Breslow guesses you're working for the Soviet Union. Parker sure is jumpy. He's got a lot to lose. He's a resident illegal, remember? My old comrade Max would challenge you to a duel if you suggested such a thing. And what of Botka and the other madmen? You sure they've no suspicions? Who the hell is Botka? I have no idea. Just keep on monitoring. Botka, Rao, and the others are senile. They think that I'm an old-fashioned liberal like them. They don't suspect me of anything. Now, quit worrying, will you? Willie. General Smuck has made the document's top priority, and he doesn't get his priorities wrong. Nothing must stand in the way of our getting the documents. You tell your General Schmuck to get stuffed. I'll get the Stein documents, and I'll get them my way. And it won't be because some senile old fart in Moscow tells me it's top priority. <laughs> You'll end up a general someday, Willie. Same old dodge. Me, get the general? medals, they can't sure. resist it. With a uniform and all the trimming. I no, you? thanks. You'll never get me to Moscow, Eddie. You can forget that idea right now. They all say that at first, Willie, but you'll see. He's laying it on pretty thick. In two days, I shall leave for Geneva. The documents are in Pittman's house on the lakefront. Yes. It's a small package. Bring it straight back here. There should be no trouble. Fly back with the documents from Geneva? Yes. Geneva has more Moscow Centre people living there than you'll find in Moscow itself. It's the espionage capital of the world. You know that, Eddie. Why bring the documents back here when I can hand them over in Geneva for the diplomatic bag and have them in Moscow the same night? I'd prefer you to bring the documents back here. How do you know who we might be dealing with in Geneva, Willie? You might be handing the results of all this effort to some dumb clerk who'll file it or lose it or some damn thing. These things happen, you know. <laughs> the bastard Is it wants the order? documents back here so we can bring claim them all back credit. here, Willie. It's an order. Now, I gotta go. I have to catch a plane back to Chicago. 
Good luck, Willie. Yeah, good luck, Willie. The boys will snatch Cliver the second he reacts to U.S. and get a hundred years in the pen. Can you figure out what it's all about? All we're concerned about is pinning those killings on Parker and Gretchko. If General Schmuck and the British Intelligence Service both want to get hold of them so badly, they got to be pretty hot. Mm. It was a pure guess, but it seemed to me as if Churchill had written off Vega as a total loss in the grim balance sheet. What on earth are you up to? I thought this room was supposed to be secure. Not as far as I'm concerned, it isn't. What are all these books? You're doing an open university course in your spare time. I'm trying to make some sense of whatever it is I'm supposed to be working on. The Hitler minutes. The old man keeps on insisting that they're forgeries. I'm trying to find out whether there is any possibility that a meeting could have taken place between Hitler and Churchill in 1940. It's not exactly the kind of thing you're going to find in the official records. So I've been checking the movements of Churchill and Hitler for every day of the year. No wonder you look all in. And there is one day where Churchill seems to have been behaving very oddly, to say the least of it. You see, on every other occasion that year when Churchill visited Paris, he was accompanied by an official escort all the time, fighter patrols the lot, and he slept in the British Embassy. But the visit of June the 11th and 12th seems to have been very curious. Probably needed a change. People do, you know. Anyway, you'll be working late. Yeah. There's a very good new restaurant in Sloan Street. Don't get too exhausted. The French government left Paris on the 10th, the day on which Mussolini declared war. The French met Churchill at Briere, and Churchill says the rendezvous wasn't fixed until the day of his departure. But he didn't stay with the other members of the English contingent. Dill, Ismay, Anthony Eden were all accommodated in a military train. But Churchill flew on again as soon as his plane had landed. So where did he go? Now, Spears says... On the morning of the 12th, I did not look up for a while. And when I did, I was astonished to see the Prime Minister's detective, Thompson. So he wasn't with him either. I said... Why, Thompson, what are you doing here? Weren't you with the Prime Minister? And he replied, I had to sleep here, and the French failed to realise I needed a car. So he didn't even have a bodyguard. And there was no fighter escort for the return flight. Spears says, The news that Churchill's party had to leave without fighter escort owing to the weather made me feel no happier. And Churchill says... The morning was cloudy, thus making it impossible for the 12 Hurricanes to accompany us. The weather didn't stop the RAF making low-level bombing attacks along the Albert Canal. So were the fighters deliberately kept away in case they saw something they shouldn't? Like Churchill's plane taking off from a German airfield? And where was Hitler? According to this, he was at a place called Brûlée de Pêche on the Belgian frontier. Seems to have consisted of a hotel, a few recently built wooden huts, and a rough kind of airstrip. Just the place for a quiet meeting. And an instruction to the Luftwaffe High Command about a special escort for an unnamed plane. No fighter pilot must lead the escort formation to attack enemy targets. The Geschwader Commodore, whoever he may have been, is to lead the mission in person. To make sure that Churchill's aircraft got there unmolested. If it was Churchill's aircraft, if it ever happened, but it could have happened, that's the point. And five days later, by then, Churchill had obviously changed his mind. We have become the sole champions now in arms to defend the world cause. We shall do our best to be worthy of that high honour. We shall defend our island, and with the British Empire around us, we shall fight on, unconquerable, until the curse of Hitler is lifted from the brows of men. We are sure that in the end, all will be well.
In XPD by Len Dayton, Boyd Stewart was played by Trevor Nichols, Sidney Ryden, David Garth, Max Breslow, Bernard Hepton, Willie Kleiber, Clifford Rose, Prime Minister, Bernard Brown, Project Chairman, Bruce Boer, Sam Seymour, William Roberts, Calcoven, Stuart Milligan, Wynne, Lou Hirsch, Parker, Colin Starkey, Kitty, Melinda Walker, Secretary, Garrard Green. XPD is dramatised by Michael Bakewell and directed by Peter King. And Len Dayton's XPD continues after the weekend here on 4 Extra with Danger in Switzerland as the investigations into those potentially explosive wartime secrets continue.